My name's Tony, and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. Thank you for joining me. We have an hour together for chair yoga, and we'll be in the chair for the first half of the class, and for the end of class, we'll be coming down to the earth. If the earth is not your chosen place to be, and you want to bring the earth up to you, feel free to do the second half of the class, lying down on the sofa, on a bed, on a reclined chair, anywhere that is above all else stable. Starting off in our chair, comfy chair. So if you wiggle and wiggle from side to side, you feel nice and stable and you've got a whole bunch of space around you for when you're moving your limbs. Coming to a place that feels really comfortable for you, knowing there is no wrong way to do any of this. Feet are at a comfortable distance. If you like the back of your chair for support, take it at any time. If you'd like to come away from the back of your chair, supporting your own spine every now and again or throughout the class, please go ahead and do that. Settling the feet down. Whether you're wearing shoes, socks, or your bare feet, it really doesn't matter. Imagine or pick up those toes, spread them nice and wide. We awaken the arches of the feet. We awaken the muscles of the legs somewhat, pushing down through the balls of the feet, the heels, inside and outside edges of the feet too. Just enough pressure that you may notice the muscles of the legs awakening. You might even push down so much you feel a lifting through the lower abdomen as that um, the core activation happens. You might even sit a little bit taller. With that pressure, Allow that to ebb away and then drift the toes down nice and softly. Mm -hmm. And then from there, taking the awareness right up towards your seat where it meets the chair. And then again, evening things up side to side, front to back. You might even notice, depending on the kind of chair you're on, if you wiggle from side to side, you notice two bony bits underneath you. This is kind of like connecting down to the soles of the feet that we just did. This is your connection down to the chair, the base of the pelvis. So, evening that up a little, and then allowing the upper body to sit deeply into the chair. So kind of releasing any tightness, any tension. So we feel um, a little bit like gravity is getting a bit heavier. So from the pelvis down, we're really nice and connected. And then from there, there's this lifting up through the spine, opening up through the heart space, crown of the head is reaching up. Consider rolling the shoulders back and down a couple of times. Notice if there's any tightness and tension there, relieving that as much as you can. And then settling the shoulders back and down, and again, broadening through the collarbones. And then consider here where the shoulders are in relation to your hips. If the shoulders are forward, then you're going to feel a little bit more pressure on the top of the back of the thighs, at the top of the chair. You're going to feel like your tailbone is out behind you. If you had a tail, that it would kind of be wagging behind you there. If you're sitting, if your shoulders are back from your hips, then it almost feels like your tail, if you had a tail coming from the tailbone, would be kind of between your legs and you're sitting onto the back of the pelvis. So what we're looking for is a place that feels comfortable for you that is more upright. So as if that tailbone was just reaching down towards the earth itself. And a continuation of that would be a vertical line. Drawing the chin in a little so the ears come back more or less over the ear, over the shoulders. And we'll take a big breath in, noticing how you have positioned yourself. On the exhale, keep what works for you, and exhale, let go and adjust so it feels sustainable. Let's take another few breaths like that. Every inhale, notice the posture. Every exhale, ease into something that works for your body today. And so again, if any kind of adjustments that feel good for you. So it feels like if we just sat here for an hour, breathing and paying attention, then it would be sustainable. And then we'll do our check-in from this place. So go ahead and soften your gaze or lower your gaze if you want to, or let everything get a little hazy. 
or if you feel comfortable and stable, please go ahead and close your eyes. And then take your awareness all the way back to this morning when you woke up, whenever that was. And then like a movie that you're watching from the day, however long that is, and maybe it's the beginning of your day or the end of your day, whenever it is, just notice everything that happened through your day to this moment. The things that you did, maybe the food that you ate, anything at all until we come here, finding yourself with that chair underneath you, the floor underneath your feet. And then let that go. So we really become very present in this moment. Noticing maybe the sounds around you, noticing the clothes on your body, Noticing how you're feeling in this moment. And maybe a lot of emotions come up, maybe nothing in particular. Maybe you're not quite sure, that's okay. We're not looking for anything in particular, we're just allowing ourselves to open our awareness to this moment. Noticing also what's on your mind. If there are particular thoughts, concerns, stories, sensations that your mind is occupied with. Not judgment, not, uh, not judging any of it, but just noticing, being aware. And then we notice how our physical body is today. You might notice the surface underneath the soles of your feet, whether that's socks, whether that is a mat like me or anything else. And then draw your awareness from the soles of your feet up through your body, slowly, 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 bit by bit, noticing sensations. Try and stay away from the stories behind the sensations. For example, oh, I feel that thing in my knee. Ah, oh, that's from that surgery all those years ago, from that accident. That would be the story. All we want is, ah, oh, I have a sensation in my knee. What does that sensation feel like? And then if it's on one side of your body, notice the opposite side of your body. Or if it's in the front of your body, notice the back of your body. So if it's the back of your knee, how does the front of your knee feel? And we're trying to tune into the more subtle, quieter sensations here. Allowing that awareness to draw all the way up to the crown of your head. And then allow your awareness to expand whenever you're ready into your whole body. Noticing your energy levels today, how you experience your body in this moment. And again, trying to stay away from the stories, noticing, being curious about the stories that keep coming in if they do. No judgment. Just in that, oh, there I go again, thinking about that thing. Notice if there's tension and tightness in your body that you can release either by adjusting your body, some movement, or sending some breath there, or any other way that you feel can ease any tightness. And then when you're ready, start to notice the breath in your body. Noticing the inhale and the exhale. Starting to deepen the inhale and lengthen the exhale in your own way. Deepening and lengthening. Smoothing out the breath as best as you can, all the way to the top of the breath and all the way down to the bottom of that exhale. And this is regulating the breath, breathing in and out through the nose as that's comfortable for you, or 
in your own way. If there's any straining in the breath, let that go. So there's a quality of softness there. And when you're ready, start to consider the breath. That inhale and exhale. And then consider the center line of your body. And I'm not talking about your actual spine, just as if you, the plumb line is coming from just above your head, drawing down through to the pelvic floor or even down to the earth. And I want you to consider the breath a little bit like an elevator. So at the bottom of the breath, wherever the breath feels like it's present for you. So if for some of us, it may be in our belly. For some of us, it might be the pelvic floor or even the floor. Coming up that center line of the body. And when you inhale, we draw the breath up through the center line of the body to whatever height feels good. For some of us, the heart. Some of us, maybe the throat, the head. Maybe it goes beyond our body exhaling drawing that just as steady and smooth back down as if it's an elevator so i'm going to i'm going to call this elevator breath the inhale lifting and exhale drawing down and on that inhale you might feel a quality of lightness and on the exhale you may feel and be able to tap into that quality of softening and letting go elevate your breath so that exhale is just as important to steady that exhale as it is the inhale so imagine tiny little people in that elevator that we don't want to jostle so allowing that breath to be as smooth as possible that was the regulation we did earlier settle the breath down to be sustainable and maybe that means that that elevator doesn't go quite so far in that center line of the body. And maybe it does. Your choice. There's no wrong way to do this. If this doesn't suit you, you don't like visualizing, no big deal. You can just let it go and come to that steady breath. Otherwise, elevate your breath. Inhaling, lifting, that lightness. Exhaling, that sense of grounding and connection down to the earth. We'll root down through our feet and seat to rise from there. Once again, adjusting your posture so you feel comfortable here. And on the inhale, let's lift the chin, lengthen through the back of the neck so we're not just compressing the back of the neck towards the top of the shoulders. Exhale, dropping the chin slowly down towards the chest. Inhaling, lifting, exhaling, lowering. Noticing how this feels. Mm -hmm. And maybe keep that nice small movements because that's what feels really good in your neck. Everything moving from the collarbones upwards only so the spine is neutral. Let's take another couple of breaths here. And again, on that lifting, there's a length through the back of the neck. Next, exhale, whenever that is for you, we'll draw the chin slowly down towards the chest. Broaden the collarbones, maybe even sit those shoulders back a little and breathe into back of the head, back of the neck, upper shoulders, upper back. If you need to back off, please do. Let's stay for another full breath here. And then on the inhale, we'll draw the crown of the head all the way up once more. This is the inhale and the exhale, right ear, right shoulder. Let that inhale draw you up through center and that exhale, that elevate your breath, dipping the opposite ear down towards the shoulder. So still we have that focused elevate your breath. going at the rate of your breath option to stay here option to dangle those hands down if you want a little more sensation in the side of the neck again noticing if your body is tipping from side to side and there will be a little movement there but trying to keep the spine as neutral as possible so we really isolate through the cervical spine there
Next time we come up through center, let's take those inhales to center, exhales, gliding the gaze to one side, inhaling through center and taking the gaze to the other side, keeping the collarbones wide, keep the eyes soft, lowered or closed. It's a great way of understanding what's, what you're feeling in your body. Never pushing past the breath on those twists. And let's do one more either side or rest whenever you want to. Come back through center. And we'll keep those arms dangled down. If you have arms on your chair, of course, you can bend those elbows. With a neutral spine, we're rooting to rise. We've got that elevator breath coming up and down. That breath is going to move through the shoulders. So as we breathe up, the elevator lifts up. We're going to draw the shoulders up towards the ears and roll them on that exhale back and down. Inhaling forward and up. And if you're going in a different direction, no big deal. Exhaling down. The most important thing here is that you're moving with the breath. Noticing your body, noticing if one side is curiously different from another, keeping the spine as neutral as possible. And again, it's not that we can, um, we try and isolate the movement here and there, but it's not that that doesn't ripple through the rest of your body. Notice if you need to adjust the movement or change it in any way, maybe it gets smaller, bigger, Elevate your breath. So let those inhales draw the shoulders up, the exhale, settle it back down. Let's take two more, unless you're resting, and you can always, whatever we're doing, do less repetitions, do every other one, every third one. We'll pause at the end of that exhale, rest if you need to, or let the breath take it back in the opposite direction. You may feel this in very different places. Inhaling and exhaling. Make any adjustments to the movements that suits you in this moment. It may be that you want to do less. Maybe you want to change something up a little bit. Let's take another two. And on that exhale, let's come back through center, dangling those hands. I'm going to take those hands into soft or tighter fists. I'm going to circle through those wrists one direction, nice and slow. Notice the tighter places for sure, but also notice there is ease there as well. And then take it around in the opposite direction. What we focus on, we feel. So if you're only noticing everything that feels really tight or tough, then that is what is going to be front and foremost in your awareness. So balance the awareness out a little bit. Wiggle those fingers when we come to stillness. And then we're gonna keep those hands dangling next to us and let's get into the lateral flexion of the spine. So, rooting to rise, elevator breath. Let that elevator breath guide you as this is the inhale. On the exhale, we're dropping those right fingertips down Keeping that left hip connected down and the inhale, that elevator draws us up through center. And then as we take that breath down, the left fingertips come down. Notice what's happening in the pelvis here. Keeping the pelvis rooted to the chair, the feet also. Notice if as you come to one side, the opposite shoulder wants to sneak forward a little bit. See if you can keep those collarbones wide, even if that means you don't go quite so far. That means we're not getting a forward fold, we're actually getting into uh, keeping it isolated through the side of the body. Chin can draw in um, a little, protecting the back of the neck as the back of the neck is long. Nicely done. Coming back through center on one of your next inhales. We're going to keep this movement, only we're going to bring the hands in too. 
So I'm going to turn both palms out. On the next inhale, we're going to drop down the left fingertips and we raise the right fingers coming from the elbow, exhaling down. Inhaling, coming to the next side and exhaling down. Option to stay there or move from the shoulder. Inhaling and exhaling. Those fingertips can come to any height. Keep the joints nice and soft as if you're moving through water. As you come to one side, you're welcome to support yourself with the opposite hand on the side of legs of your chair. And we're not trying to go as far as we possibly can here. What we're trying to do is keeping that elevator breath moving the body in a way that feels sustainable and controlled. So if you're getting to one side and you're feeling like you're collapsing a little bit and you're kind of having to haul yourself back up, don't go quite so far. Yoga is not about more is better. This is about how it simply feels for you. And then the next time we come up, we draw ourselves all the way up through center. Any intuitive movements you need through your um, shoulders, your upper body, go ahead and we'll come back to center. Regulating the breath, that elevator breath, coming in and out, up and down. If you're sitting into the back of your chair, I highly recommend you come forward a little as we get down through the spine into flexion and extension. So seated cat and cow, rooting down to rise. On the inhale, we're drawing the heart forward hands, slide back towards the pelvis and arching the back. On the exhale, rounding the back of the ribs towards the back of the chair as we curl in. Staying in the middle of the spine here. If you want to, we've already been here. We're going to add on by lifting the chin, lengthening through the back of the neck on the exhale, curling the chin down and in. Mm -hmm. On that inhale, if it feels good to you, you can send the tailbone out behind you. If that feels too much in your lower back, please don't do it. On the exhale, drawing the pubic bone towards the belly button as if we're kind of um, drawing those two points towards each other, coming into the trans abdominals there. Mm -hmm. If you want to add on with the arms on the next inhale, you can reach up with one arm and exhale, taking it down towards or on the knees as we round. And we'll come to the other side. Those fingertips can come up, they can. Um, be at any height. Don't um, worry if one side is very different from another. Move with your body, not against it. Those fingertips can even come behind the ear a little bit, depending on what feels good to you and your range of motion. Mm -hmm. If you want to bring movement into it as we extend the spine, and the arm you can look towards the side that the arm is lifted exhaling back down getting into the neck here that functional movement as many things are happening glancing to that side maybe even back behind that shoulder and let's take Two more either side, moving with your breath, elevate your breath. Remember that inhale is lifting up, exhaling, drawing back down. One more either side in your own time. And then coming back through center and any intuitive movement that you um, need here to release any tension, go ahead. And then from here, we're gonna take those arms out in a cactus. Elbows can be down towards the ribs or up towards shoulder height, but no more. 
palms facing knees, spread those fingers and thumbs out really nice and wide to stretch through the hands. And on the inhale, let's draw the shoulder blades towards each other, keeping the spine neutral. And on that exhale, turn the palms towards you as we draw the elbows and pinky fingers in towards each other. Now, the further down those elbows are, the easier this is going to be. The more towards shoulder height those elbows are, the more challenging this is going to be. Notice how that feels. Let's take another two here and we'll get a little bit more rotation through the shoulders. Elevator breath, inhaling, we're lifting up, exhaling, that breath is going down. Let's come back to that cactus arms. We're only here for three more breaths. This is the inhale. Let's send the fingertips down towards the earth. Inhaling up, maybe those palms even reach back behind you towards the ceiling. Exhaling, same thing. Mm -hmm. After that last exhale, we'll dangle the hands down, give them a little wiggle, and then taking the hands back to center, regulating the breath. Inhaling and exhaling that elevator breath. Settle in, and then when you feel ready, we're gonna take those feet a little wider into external rotation. External rotation is so important because most of us spend our days with parallel legs or even internally rotated legs. So we wanna get that full use of the hip joints to keep that open and fluid and movable. So we're rooting down feet under ankles. So noticing if your feet are out or if they're in, there's some odd angles and try and keep those ankles just under the knees. Even if that means moving your feet in a little closer. Rooting to rise. Elevator breath. We inhale, we lengthen a little bit. Exhale, we get that sense of grounding and support underneath us. And then from here, fingertips come to the inside of those legs. And when you're ready, rolling round those lower rib hula hoops. And once you have the movement, doesn't have to be a big movement, allow the shoulders, the upper body, the head, the neck to get involved. Allow the hips to move with you, making sure you feel supported. So if you need more support, slide back into the chair. And notice how that feels. Allow your body to move in its own way. And notice the ease in places as well as the places that feel more challenging. Elevator breath. So as we come forward, the breath lifts. And as we draw back and down, the breath is lowering. And then at the end of the exhale, whenever you feel ready, we'll start to go around in the opposite direction. This might feel a little awkward to start with. We try and make the movement as fluid as we can as controlled as we can too. So if you're getting to some places that you feel like you're less in control of the movement, just pull back a little bit, do a little less. So again, more is not better here. What we're trying to do is engage everything in a way that feels more fluid for us. And then when you're ready, We'll come back through center. If the breath changed or got elevated, regulate it here, check in, notice how you're feeling. Hand resting towards or on that knee, you can keep the foot down on the floor, lift the toes, lift the ball of the foot. If you like, pivoting on the heel, we're gonna inhale wide and exhale, drawing it down and in. Mm -hmm. Letting that heel or the foot be that pivot point, which 
that heel is directly under the knee. Noticing that elevator breath as you move. Inhaling, you've got that wide leg, exhaling, drawing it in. If you don't need the hand to guide you, no big deal. And then the next time we draw that knee out, we'll keep it there. Take the foot down if it was lifted and readjust yourself should you need it. Coming to the other side. Adjusting your foot as you feel, as you see fit. And then on the inhale, with that elevated breath, we're drawing wide on the exhale, that knee comes down and in any amount. And one side can be very different from the other. Keeping the joints stable and steady. We're never pushing past the breath that inhaling and exhaling. Nicely done. Let's take another couple on this side. Noticing how that feels in the left hip. I'm of course mirroring you. And then the next time we draw that knee out to the side or whenever you feel ready, we'll take the foot down. Rearrange yourself so we come back to that externally rotating stance and then in your own time we're going to heel toe or walk those feet back towards each other washing the knees side to side here rooting to rise steadying the breath noticing how everything feels for you And then from here, transferring yourself to where you prefer to be for the last half of the class. And you can do everything from the chair if you want to. Just adjust the movement for sitting. Gravity is a little bit different, of course, so take breaks when you need to. So when we're extending the leg, then you're extending the leg out here. When we're circling, you can take breaks when you need to. You can draw your knee in, circle through the ankle, etc., etc. Adjust things as if you were just lying on your back, but you're in the chair. Again, gravity's against you here, or a very different way of gravity. So please be gentle with yourself, being guided by that steady breath. A bed, a sofa, or you can come down on the floor, whatever feels good for you. And I will see you on the earth. We're gonna come down to our backs, knees to the sky, feet to the floor, and I'll see you there. Hello again. We're gonna come all the way down to our back, like I said. Make sure you have everything handy that you need for relaxation, and we'll come all the way down to the floor. Picking up the pelvis, if you like, shifting the hips a little closer towards your heels so we will lengthen through the back of the spine or back of the, um, the body. Adjust yourself to what feels like center here. So this is the equivalent of a sitting up, rooting to rise and deciding where it is that we're going to start. And then come back to the breath. Breathing in and out through the nose if that's comfy or your own comfy way. We're going to inhale, imagine that um, elevator coming up any amount through the center line of the body and exhaling, drawing it just as slowly back down. So we establish the same breath here. Regulating that breath, smooth and steady. And we'll draw that right knee in towards us. Let that left foot push down a little so we're, we can use that to draw the belly down towards the earth. And then from there, let's circle through that ankle. So we get that full rotation through the ankle. You can ripple that through the feet as you point and flex the feet too. Pause and take that round in the opposite direction when you're ready. Make adjustments to the movement as you need to. And then from here, coming back through center. Now the arms can be in a cactus or a T, or you can even take the hands behind the head, as long as the shoulders and the arms feel comfortable. So adjust yourself, 
Notice what feels right for you. Those hands can be down by the hips too. There's no wrong way to be. And with that breath coming in and out, up and down, you're gonna start to cycle with that right heel. So as if you're on an upside down, one-legged bicycle that's getting nowhere, try and draw circles with the heel. So we're drawing the knee right up towards the chest and you can use the left foot to allow that to really connect and then we're drifting that heel any amount away. So the bigger those circles are and the more you extend that right leg in those circles, then of course the more you're taking the weight of the leg. So focus on the breath, use that left foot to ground the lower back into the mat. So even as you extend your leg, if you're arching your back here, don't extend it quite so far. It means that you're um, not using the abdominals anymore. You're um, recruiting other places in the body. So you really wanna keep that lower back connected down to the mat, nice and steady movements. Again, the control is what we're looking for. And then at the end of that exhale, We'll pause and go around in the opposite direction. So start slow. If you are doing this in the chair, then of course gravity is different. Please rest when you need to. You can extend those circles, but notice if you're trying to skip through a particular area, especially when you're drawing that knee in towards your chest, make that just as mindful as drawing that leg out and away. So we really are using the full power of the muscles. And then the next time that knee comes in towards your chest, you can give it a little hug. Mm -hmm. Hand towards that right knee and we're gonna circle through the hip. So we did it in one direction, and now we're going around drawing those circles in a different direction. Option to wing that left knee out, if that feels comfortable for you, you can support yourself on the outside of that hip with a bolster or a, blank, a folded blanket, or you can extend that left leg out. If the left leg is extended, the flex through that ankle, and you're pushing that whole leg down through the earth to ground the pelvis. If you don't need the hand to support the circling of the knee, then no need to do it. And then next time the knee comes in, we're gonna pause, rest when you need to. We'll take that round in the opposite direction. Of course, we're lubricating that hip, getting that full range of motion. Again, don't forget about that left leg rooting down or the left foot if that knee is bent. Keep it sustainable with the breath. And then the next time that knee comes up towards you, you're gonna give that a little hug. If that left leg is extended, we'll bring it back to center and cross the outer ankle onto the left thigh. Flex in that right foot to keep the right knee connected and um, supported, and then wing that right knee out without lifting that side of the pelvis or dropping it. Great place to be right here, and you can push down into the left foot to ground through that lower back. Option to stay here in a figure four, option to draw the thigh in as we come into thread the needle. Hands to either side of the thigh, the left thigh underneath the knee pit or in front of that shin. Let the legs do a lot of the work here. So that left knee is drawing in, the thigh is drawing into the outer right ankle, the right ankle is pushing away and down.
Keep the breath steady. Keep that lower back imprinted down into the mat. You can even draw the tailbone down if you like as well, keeping the back body as stable as possible. And then when you're ready, releasing that grip, taking that left foot down to the earth, noticing how that feels. And then when you're ready, releasing that right leg. Take the feet nice and wide, adjust your shoulders so they're steady, and then we'll wash those knees side to side. Keeping the back of the pelvis on the earth if you have SI joint issues. And then we'll come back to center, walking those feet back to about hip um, width or a comfortable width for you. See if you're staying connected to that elevator breath here. Option to stay and focus on the breath more or we'll draw that left knee in, give it a little hug and we'll circle through that ankle. Nice and slow, elevator breath. The inhale draws the toes up towards the chin, exhale drawing it down and away as that breath comes up and down the center line of your body. And then we'll pause and then take it around in the opposite direction. So slower than you think as we move with the breath, usually noticing if you're ahead of the breath or behind the breath. And then we'll take that foot into a flex. And then the hands come down by the hips, cactus or a T, shoulder height, or um, your hands can um, clasp behind your head. Push down through the right foot to ground through the lower back. So you really that, get that connection down so it is mindful. And then from here, we are circling through the right heel, that upside down, one-legged bicycle move. Notice if when you draw the knee in, you're kind of just allowing that to happen and use that right foot to really draw that left knee up. So we're really using every part of the movement to build awareness, strength, stability, and flexibility. Option to extend that leg out any amount, of course, you can keep a nice bend in it, you can keep it towards straight. We're trying not to rush through any part of it, keeping that lower back pressed down into the earth. Keep the breath flowing, so we're inhaling and exhaling that elevator breath. The next time that knee comes in, let's pause and then we'll send that round in the opposite direction. Again, yoga isn't about more, it's better. So notice what feels best for you in your body at this moment. As we curl that knee, that thigh in towards the ribs, really allow that leg to do a lot of that work here, utilizing that right foot on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready, the next time that leg comes in, we'll give it a little hug, left hand, left knee here, ground through the torso into the earth, and then we'll circle in a different direction, getting into, of course, the opening of the groin and um, in that full move of the hip. Option to wing that right knee out. You can support yourself on the outside by a bolster or a pillow. Extend the right leg if that feels okay in your groin. Flex in that ankle, in both ankles in fact, but that right leg from the back of the pelvis all the way down to the heel is pressing down to the earth to ground you. You don't need that left leg or left hand to guide the left leg, no big deal. And then we'll pause and take that round in the opposite direction. Notice the area that is the least comfortable for you. See if you can slow that down or even make the movement smaller so it's more comfortable. What we want is the fluidity here and again the control. We've got that inhaling and exhaling, that elevator breath as we move. Rest whenever you need to. 
And then when you're ready, we'll draw that knee in and up. If the right leg is extended, bend the knee, foot to the floor, and again, we ground the lower back as we push down through the right leg, outer left ankle comes on top of the right thigh, and here we are in a figure four. Great place to be right here. Winging that left knee out, pushing the left ankle into the right thigh. Excellent place to stay or hover that right foot. Both ankles are flexed to protect the knee and we're drawing the right thigh in towards the ribs any amount. Hands resting where they feel comfortable. And notice if there's small adjustments you can make to your body to make this more manageable, make the breath more sustainable. Rather than thinking there is a right way to do this, see if you can play a little bit and notice what feels good for you. Tiny adjustments, tapping into the breath, And then when you feel ready, releasing any bind you had with the hands, releasing that right foot down, and then releasing the left leg too. Once again, taking the knees and the feet wide towards the edges of your mat, your arms too, and we'll wash those knees side to side. Keep it gentle. And then any side joint issues, this is where you're staying, or those knees can come all the way to one side and then all the way back to the other side, your choice. And from here, coming back through center. I'm gonna send those legs long along the floor. And then walk the heels over towards the right side of your mat. From here, cross the right ankle over the left. So that left ankle is grounded by the right foot. So we've got a slight curve over towards the right side of the mat. Any twinging in the lower back here, please readjust yourself and don't go quite so far over to the right. We're keeping that left side of the pelvis grounded and rooted. Option to stay here. And if this feels a lot, we've got that kind of length opening through the outside of the left hip here. We try to keep length on the right side too, so it's not that we're compressing it there, it's that we're having this opening through the left side. If it feels like there's a lot in your shoulders just to be here, and hands of course can be down by your hips, cactus or a T, please stay there. Again, more is not better. We want that lifting up, maybe from the soles of your feet now, that elevated breath coming all the way up through the body, exhaling down, or however the breath feels like it's landing in your body. The option is to extend the left arm up and overhead. If the shoulder floats up, then widen the hand just to make sure that shoulder is grounded. Depending on what feels right for you, that right hand can take hold of the left wrist and then draw the left fingers over towards the right. And now we have this full banana shape here. Left shoulder's grounded. And you can adjust yourself any amount. We're finding that length through the left side of the body, but we've also got space in the right side of the body. So we're not just collapsing here. Breathing into where you feel this. You may feel this in your hip, your ribs, your waist, your shoulder, anywhere on that left side, you might feel it in a completely different place. Let's breathe from the soles of our feet all the way up through the body. And exhaling, settling the breath down towards the soles of the feet again. So we really get that full elevator breath. So we're moving energy all the way through the body. And then from here, if you have a bind in the hands, we'll release that. Allow the torso to come back to center. Take that right foot, bind out and we're coming, bringing your whole body back to center. Noticing how that feels. Now, if you need to bend the knees to adjust your pelvis in any way, please do. And then we're sending the legs out long. Coming to the other side. So keeping the torso as is, we're gonna send those heels over to the left side of the mat. 
and then lift that left ankle and ground the right ankle. So we're crossing the left ankle over the right. So it really sends that message to the right side of the body that it's rooted down. Don't be surprised if this side feels very different. So if you're feeling any tweaking anywhere, adjust the movement either a little less or stay as you are or maybe a little more depending on what feels good in your body. Ground through especially that right shoulder, make sure the shoulders feel comfortable here and maybe this is where you stay. And same as the other side, if you want to, you can extend that right arm up a little more. It doesn't have to be very much. Keeping that right shoulder grounded. And if that doesn't stay grounded there, then take the hands down by the hips and stay there, breathing into where you feel this. The option is to take that right um, wrist with the left elbow and drawing everything over to the left side. So we've got this banana shape through the right side of the body here. The left side is just as lengthened. And we're breathing, breathing from the soles of your feet all the way up, that elevator breath. And exhaling, flushing the breath down and out, just as steady, just as slow. And if there's anywhere in your body as you stay here that doesn't feel like the breath's getting there, then send your mind and your breath to that location and really infuse it with breath. And on that exhale, allow the breath to really permeate that area so it feels like the breath is filling up. You can always come out whenever you want to, otherwise you've got a couple more breaths here. And then if you have that grind in, the hands will release that. And then we're releasing the left ankle over the right, bringing everything back to center. Adjusting yourself, bend your knees, feet to the floor, and take the pelvis back to a central place. And then we'll take the pelvis up and over to the left. Keeping those shoulders grounded, especially that left shoulder, making sure you have any support you need on that lower right side of your body, will draw the knees up and over to the right. Allowing those knees to be in any place, again, supporting under the right thigh, outer knee, shin, ankle, if you need to. Make any adjustments, I'm right next to the wall there, so. Left shoulder is grounded, so we get this openness across the body in that diagonal. The gaze can stay to neutral, up towards the ceiling or over that left shoulder, depending on what it feels like in your neck. And keep the breath coming here, elevate your breath. Make any adjustments you need to, and see if there's any hardening in your body where you can soften. Gaze comes to center when you feel ready. And slowly but surely we'll bring those knees up to center, sending the hips into a neutral place. Any adjustments you need to, and then we'll pick those hips up, shift them all the way to the right side of the mat, drawing the knees up and over together, and then over to the left side. Left shoulder stays grounded and rooted here. And again, take any support you need under the left side of the legs. If that right shoulder is grounded, feel free to take the gaze over that shoulder. If it feels okay in your neck. And then make small or big adjustments here to notice where you feel this in your body. The slightest shift can change everything. So notice what feels good to you. That elevator breath still guiding you. If you feel ever feel like you're holding the breath, please come out of the shape, establish the breath, and move into the shape with that breath being your guide. Just 
soften, if there's any hardening or tightening in places, and if that means adjusting the shape, please do. And when you feel ready, gaze comes to center, if it was off to the right, and we'll take those knees up and over to center. Plant the feet, hips come back to center, and we'll take those knees in towards each other, rocking and rolling, fly side to side, massaging that lower back, back of the pelvis. You can keep the knees together or wide towards the armpits. This is a modified happy baby opening through the groin there, rooting down through the back of the pelvis. You can stay here if you want to send those feet up towards the ceiling, hands at the back of the thighs, outer shins or calves or those outer feet. And we're in kind of an upside down squat here. Imprinting the lower back and the pelvis into the mat. You can stay in stillness or movement. What feels good to you? Give yourself permission to play. And if there's another movement you want to take to end your practice, anything at all that feels really good to you, do what you need to over the next few breaths. And then when you're ready, we'll take those feet down to the floor. Constructive rest would be sending those heels out, knees towards each other, and this is a fantastic way to rest and support your lower back. If you want to take another shape for relaxation, maybe the legs out long, maybe a bolster or something under the back of your thighs or knees, you can take any shape you want, but don't forget that relaxation can be on your side, on your belly, you can sit in meditation. There is no wrong way to be. And as you settle yourself in, I too will settle myself into a seated position to guide you. And this isn't about a right and wrong place to be. This is about probably one of the most important parts of the practice which is conscious rest. So making adjustments as you need to. Maybe a pillow or folded blanket under your head. Softness where you need it, extra warmth, extra layers, maybe a eye pillow or a soft, clean, dark sock over your eyes. We can tune the um, world out a little bit more. And our body allows itself to relax only when it feels supported. So send your awareness into your body and notice if there's holding in a particular part of your body that you could add extra support, a little pillow or a blanket there, so that can release. And again, darkness and warmth are other things that help the body relax. So do what it is that you can offer yourself. And then when you're ready, take a full breath in. Exhale it out like a sigh. Let's take a couple more of those. Allowing those exhales to ground your body deeper into the earth. Feeling that support underneath you. And take more or less one or more of those exhales as you let go of your body. And then let the breath come back to breathe for you. So no control. And we settle in, we settle down to this moment. And just like we did with the morning when we went to when you woke up, let's take our awareness back to the beginning of our class today. And then just like a movie, noticing everything that happened in the last hour until this moment. And then let that practice go. Let judgments, all the things you notice, just allow that to be just as it is as you find yourself in this moment here. 
allowing the body to soften and deepen into that rest. Inviting your inner body to start to release any tightness and tension through the joints, through the organs, allowing the muscles to loosen and lengthen, the muscles of your face to soften completely, jaw soft, back teeth parted, smooth the forehead, eyes soft, lowered or closed. And we invite in the calm. As we observe ourselves deepening into that tranquility as much as you are comfortable doing. Every soft, uncontrolled exhale to just dissolve tension, tightness, thoughts, distractions, sensations. Tune all the mind out just a little bit as if you can't. It's kind of like a radio station that you can't quite hear. And notice that you are the one listening. You are not all those thoughts, distractions. Resting here for as long as you feel supports your practice. And if you want to stay for longer, let my words wash over you and not distract you from that deep rest. And if you wish to finish your practice, notice if you're already up and out the door, already thinking about your grocery lists or your to-do lists, and come back to the here and now, feeling your support underneath your body. Notice your body as a whole. Notice your breath in the body. And imagine that you could breathe from the soles of your feet, bringing it all the way up through to the crown of your head. And exhale like a sigh as the breath leaves down through your body, through the soles of your feet. Inhaling, infusing with energy, exhaling, letting that go. And as you do that, with those mindful breaths, start bringing in awakening movements that feel comfortable for you, allowing your body to guide you to a place that you wish to finish your practice today, whatever that feels for you. 
And then take your time finding yourself, bringing yourself lazily, slowly to a shape that you wish to complete in. And we settle down wherever we've chosen into the support underneath us. If there's a gentle gesture that you would like to bring into your hands or your body to finish up, please do. When you're ready, take a breath in and on an exhale, soften or lower the gaze or close the eyes as you draw the chin down towards the chest. And take a moment here to notice how you feel after your practice. Thank yourself sincerely for this time that you've set aside for yourself. From my heart to yours, namaste. Thank you for joining me.